to another episode of Going Back to the Basics, where we're going to take exercises out of uh, instructional manuals, instructional books, and walk through them together as if we're the student and uh, see, you know, how does it all turn out? You know, does it work? Does it not work? Of course, they're supposed to work. So, well, did we work or did we not work? I guess is the answer. Hope you enjoy it. We're going to try to do a lot of things, and uh, I hope it's just about as fun to uh, to watch as it is for me to do because it's fun to go back and well, it's fun to go back to the basics. Enjoy. Alright guys, welcome to another episode of Back to the Basics. <clears throat> Thought we'd throw one out here today. Uh, we're moving back to uh, John Lord Bacon's book, uh, Forge Practice. And we're going to cover, uh, uh, we're, we're in chapter 4, <clears throat> excuse me, we're still in chapter 4, upsetting, bending, drawing out and bending. But uh, the one thing I want to cover today or, or uh, work through with you guys is this uh, forged corners where you take a bend and forge it into a 90 degree corner. It's, it's you know, as opposed to a, a just a bent over curve with a fillet and radius in there. Um, very, very cool looking. Uh, I've done this, I've done this successfully, but in the information, if you read through that, that particular part of this uh, chapter, and there's things in there that I did not think about. Uh, ultimately, all you have to do, with, well there's two, first of all he mentions two ways to do it, right? But you have to have more meat all right, in this corner to fill that. If normally on a bend, you'd have a whole, you'd have a radius here, right? And you'd have a little extra meat over here. But you need to you figure out how to put a little more meat in that corner, and you do that by upsetting the steel in both directions, making that corner a little fatter than the rest of the piece, and then draw that out. Now another method that he talks about is actually starting with a piece uh, thicker than what you want the finished piece to be. Go ahead and do a normal bend and then forge that corner in while thinning the steel out. Uh, and he does say that the, the uh, upsetting uh, method is, is in 19 or whatever it was, is the preferred method. But the one thing that I, <clears throat> I hadn't thought about was shown in this uh, illustration right here. You start, and we'll walk through this a couple times. You, you know, you make an, a bend, all right, and then you start upsetting that corner in. But one thing that he, he talks about that, again, I hadn't even, I had, I understand it, and I've actually done it by mistake and caused what he says was going to happen. But if you bend that piece before you start working at 90 degrees, or worse, more than 90, or, or less than 90, more, an acute angle rather than an obtuse angle, obtuse, acute, um, when you start upsetting, you're going to actually roll and create a, a cold shunt there. All right, so we're, what we're going to do, and basically this is it. We're going to take a piece, we'll start off with a piece of half inch square. And we're going to bend it close to 90, but at some obtuse angle. And then we're going to drive the steel down and drive the steel across until we end up with more meat in that corner than we need. Then over the edge of the anvil, we can forge it into a square. All right, that's what we're going to do. All right, guys, I'm going to interrupt. Right now, I'm done. All right, we already, we already did the exercise. I, uh, I learned two things, and, and I learned in this video, and I was going to cut it out and just start over again and show you how to do it right, right? And it's like, no, that's not, that's not the point of the video. So at, at the end, I learned these two things, and, and those are the keys. Watch where I struggle the most, all right? And then f watch how I figured out what I needed to do. And uh, sometimes reading the book backwards helps. It's, it's a little bit of a hint. Uh, the two issues that I had were when I was upsetting, trying to get more steel in a particular spot. I had a, I spent a lot of time doing it until I figured out something. Uh, and then the biggest the biggest thing was when I was trying to get this this nice edge on this 90. Uh, I was doing it wrong, and then I went back and read a previous part of the book, and I learned how to do it right. Don't forget those two things. What did I do? So I got a lot of meat in that spot, and what do I, what did I do finally to get that nice clean edge? So I'm leaving it in, it's long. Uh, I apologize if you don't like that, but I figured that, let me show you how hard it can be sometimes to learn something, I guess. So watch. All right, one thing he does mention <clears throat> about bending in general, you wanna have a good heat on there when you go to make your bend. He also, let me see if I shadow it, all right? So some good heat there. Um, he also indicates that placing a heavy sledgehammer, if you have somebody to help you, right at this point would make it easier to make the bend. But over the edge of the anvil, I'm gonna go just guess where the center is right now. We're just gonna bring that around. All right, now the reason he tells you to, to, to put weight on top of this is because when I bent it, notice how 
the top curved up, all right? Okay, and that's just, when you're, when you're working alone, that's kind of the way it goes. Put it in a vise or something like that, it might get you a cleaner end the bend. All right, so we're going up two, like he said, and now what we're going to do is we're going to strike this direction and try to move in both, both planes that meat into that corner so we can forge it out square right now. All right, so again, if all you wanted was a normal bend, you bend it 90 and be done with it. We're trying to do a forged corner, what I often say a 90 degree corner. All right, I thought I'd bring you down an anvil height on this. It might be easier to see what's happening. We're taking a good heat here, and again, we're just going to drive downward. All right, we're going to spin it around. Do the same thing. Straighten everything else up. We still got enough heat. We're going to keep it obtuse, right? And just drive that down in there. What you should be seeing is a little extra meat here. Now, the, my, I, my meat is... <laughs> It seems to have gotten fatter back here, not where I want the curve to be. So I got to work a little more on this one. All right, now another thing that comes into play, and we haven't really covered this yet, uh, we haven't covered upsetting yet, is that when, when I don't control my heat well enough, I'm going to be messing with more steel than I want to. So I'm just going to cool the parts that I don't want affected. So now I have much more control out of the sun, all right? Where that heat is. And now we're just gonna come back and continue with the upset in this direction. So that we're putting the meat where we, the heat where we want it. The meat where we want it, which is why we put the heat where we want it. So again, we're trying to thicken that corner out. We'll go at it again. Cool down my my uh, piece, except for those corners. Now, more of an acute angle. I would think something like this you should be able to do in two to three heats. we can start to see that we got much more mass in this corner now all right especially here I wish I had a little extra up here just can't seem to make it um, to get to it practice 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 I really would like before I start forging the corner over I'd really like a little more mass right there so I'm gonna focus on that one more time right, let's see if we can get this thing to do what I want it to do now I'm just gonna straighten that out so that it's more likely to upset. Right. I think we got what we're going to get out of it. is that I put enough extra meat in that corner to make a 90 degree so let, let's go ahead and forge the corner out now should be a half inch still now let's see about uh, forging this out now I'm going to take my 90 at this point over the edge of the anvil turn my tongues a little and then just start forging that back out to its original thickness this 
curve this outside curve out a little. Oops, jeez, Chandler. Until we get hopefully what we're looking for. Alright, so you can kind of see I still have a radius here that I don't want. Alright. So hopefully we got enough meat there to make that happen. Taking a good heat, just going to bring that down a little in both directions, just trying to get that corner to be pushed out. Go back over the edge of the anvil and start forging that corner in. Push my piece is a little longer, but. Is what a T is. The tons are kind of in the way. I'm just working on that corner. When we get done, we should end up with a nice sharp corner there. And it's looking to me like with this one, I didn't put enough meat on it. not so bad all right you see what I got going on I did I have some upsetting that happened here maybe once I bring that back we'll end up with a nice a nice corner on it. so let me just heat it one more time much longer than it should take all right, now let me see if I can just work some of that thickness out failure but still the point is there too much of a radius here. Let's talk about it. Alright, so in looking at this, obviously I did well with the upsetting in this direction, alright, because that's a good perfect half inch, but we thinned out a little bit too much over here. So I just didn't upset enough in that particular plane. We can fix it. Well, well that's it. Let me just recap. So we started, we bent a 90, which gave us a curved inside. And then using force in this direction and this direction, we tried to push this out fatter and this out fatter. So we end up with a lot more mass in that corner. And then we should just be able to forge that out to the proper thickness. All right, that's really all you're doing. Push some, some bulk in to that corner and then forge it out. It's funny, I've done this a lot with three quarter stuff and it seems to be uh, less of a problem, for me anyway. So I'm just gonna bring that down. Now the problem here is look at how much heat I have. I don't want all that heat there, let me get rid of it. I should have straightened it before I got rid of it though. All right, well we're skinny down here. Just trying to flatten that out. Bring that corner around. And 
until you get it right, don't give up. Because once you figure it out, like I said, I think this with half inch stuff especially, we're talking, this should be something that you do in one or two heats. I think. Let's go back and reforce that corner now. Let's see if we end up with something a little more square. I don't know how many times I'm playing. Still not perfect, but not horrible either. Okay, so still a bit of a radius out here, and uh, we're a little thicker than we need to be back here, but that's what we we'll call that practice number one. Uh, definitely, it, it, it's easier when you have longer pieces of steel, so give yourself enough when you're practicing enough length where you can work over the edge of the anvil and, uh, and still have a hold of it with the tongs. This, this side is too short. All right, let's set that one off. Let's do something I've never done. I've always, I've done, always. I've done uh, decent square corners with square stock, but never with rectangular stock. So let's go ahead and try that. Same principles should apply. Another option that he talks about in the book is uh, doing the upsetting before you even get started. So here's your square stock. If you heat in the center and upset that, I wish I could see what you could see. So that you end up with a larger mass. Oops, that's exaggerated in that area that you want the curve to be, all right? Sorry, I can't really see what I'm drawing here. The glare is in the wrong direction for me, all right? Now you can go ahead and put your bend in and have the material already there. So that is an option that he talks about. It's similar to starting with thicker stock than you need, except you don't have to forge out the whole piece, draw out the whole piece when you get done, just that upset area. All right, this should be interesting because I've not tried this before rectangular stock challenge. Just for the point of the challenge. When you watch somebody knows how to do it, it looks like magic. It almost looks like magic when they do it. One more in this direction, we'll see what we end up with. This is the thing that I'm not understanding because of all I'm getting is bending here instead of upsetting where I want it to be. And that sucks. Yeah, 
Oh, look at that little twist I got going on here. Now that's an interesting predicament. I should be able to get that out of there. Yeah, I thought this would be a nice little simple exercise. Like I said, I've done this quite a few times. No success, but on heavier stock. Doing what it's supposed to do. I isolated the heat a little more with that. Use a little heavier hammer on it. There we go. Jeez, that made a hell of a difference. Look how much meat we got there. I'll do the same thing with this side. Isolate that heat. I guarantee I wouldn't have a job long if I had worked for somebody. Heavy blows, don't lose it. Alright. Kinda liking that. Liking that, liking that. I just came back, cooled this side down. That's what we're looking for. Now you can see that extra mass in that corner. And it's gotta be in the corner before it was over here on the side. All extra mass right there in the corner. Let's see what we can do. Maybe we can square this one off. And actually have a success here, even though it took a little longer. Uh, what I just learned is that as you're heating that piece, isolate that heat. All right, cool down those two limbs, and get in there with good heavy blows, and it, it moves uh, so much more steel in that isolated area. So the heat and the heavier blows definitely are the one thing that I learned today. Let's see what we can do now about getting that sucker where we want it to be. So we're wider. We are set in the width, so we're going to take advantage of that. That's going to give us more thickness. Bringing that down to the right width. We're just going to start bringing that out. Same thing here. Trying to work it out to a corner. I'm working as he suggested at a bit of an obtuse and that way I can hammer up to the corner and actually put that ridge in. Where I want it to be. Now definitely got some ample dressing to do. Real close. So I'm thinking as I'm trying to get this corner square, working over the edge of the anvil is 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 uh, is uh, thinning the material rather than letting me come into a square. And so I'm going to try doing it this way now, and see if I can get maybe closer to what I'm after. Why I'm having such freaking troubles, children. Jesus Christ almighty. Right, do that back up. Switch this around a little. Let's see what we're getting now. Good. I wonder why my tongs are just fighting me so much. Crazy. I'm trying to clean it up now. Well, that one's looking much better. Much better. I'm going to try to switch this around if I can. It's long enough, almost long enough. I 
and that looks pretty good. That looks pretty good. Not quite square yet. Now we're too far, that's good. Now we need to back it up. There you have it. It's not horrible. I don't think it's horrible. It ain't perfect. Ah, one more time. Just not liking the uh, thicknesses that I have behind the 90 which tells me something right off the bat there. So I just thin that out a little bit and we're gonna thin this out behind the 90. And that, I think I learned something. I like it, a little thick still on this piece. Again, the point is it should look like it's just bent right around. Alright, maybe more work than it should have been, but that was a success. Alright, that looks great. Close to 90 anyway. A little, a little more clean up, but that looks great. But something I noticed, alright, trying to get that line there, that 90 degree line which I wasn't capable of doing when I did the half inch stuff. Where is it? See, there's, not, there's still a radius there. Let me, let me set something up. I think I'm gonna learn something. All right, one of the problems with, uh, yeah, with uh, Mr. Bacon's book here is that, see this illustration? It says, hey, the blower should come at a corner while the piece is sitting on the anvil, and, and he decides don't, don't blow over the edge of the anvil. He's talking about that before he even talked about upsetting. And with the upset, your, your blows are in this direction. This is what you need to do to put that edge on. I mean, it's, it's in reverse order. So I figured I did the upset, and then I can go ahead and just start pulling it out. But in reality, by putting those blows out here, then you're not, you're not getting it thinner. Remember, I kept fighting, fighting, fighting about getting it thinner and thinner. Um, so I, I just went back and reread -read that. I'm, I totally freaked out. Let's try it the right way here. Alright, let's do this the right way. So here's our bend. <coughs> and we're gonna upset, we're gonna upset it like we did before. This is too long for me to upset in that direction, so I'll just actually get the little tool out that I made. Keep the angle over 90 like he says. Alright, uh, kind of reset myself a little bit. And uh, we're going to cool this down, go back to what we already learned. Heavy hammer blows and get that thing moved down in the corner. Move down in the corner for sure. time with the isolated heat. Alright. Now we got something to work with. We got some heat down here. Alright. Isolated heats, heavy blows. We already knew that. Here what are, here's what we're about to learn. That we were doing wrong before. Alrighty, now going back to what he said before, don't try to true your thing over the corners, true it on top of the anvil. We come a little closer to 90 now, but we don't want that true 90. And we're just gonna keep working those pieces at that corner until we get a corner. See how well that's working? Alrighty, all right? So we're just gonna keep working that into the corner. 
striking here and here rather than over the anvil messing it up like we were doing before well we weren't were we <laughs> Chandler were Chandler were doing it wrong before you can already see we're gonna have success one more heat That's what happens when you do it right. I'm so glad I learned that. So I got my little upsetting block on. There you have it. All right, now we're on our way. Now we can come in here and start Playing around. You're not going to get the corner over the anvil. Alright, so now we're a little thick. I'm just going to heat it one more time. We get the point, and that was the kicker right there. So the upsetting. <sighs> Part we understood. It's that to get that corner, you do it on top, not here. All right, all we really have left to do now is take the upset out. I got too much steel here now because of the upset. So I'm not working on the corner at all, I'm just working on drawing out my upset areas. So we're back down to half by half. that corner to be half by half. We're still a little fat in this direction. Now we're a little fat in this direction. And to clean that corner up, we're going to go right back up here like this. And that's it. Get it straight, get it true, get her 90. Still a little fat in the corner. Not too bad though. That's beautiful. Alright, that's good for now. We learned something, children. We learned something for sure. Show. There you have it. Nice edge. Maybe not true 90 yet. The hammer marks all over the place, but yeah, we still got a little bending. But we are we're at 90 then. So I'm sorry that this video was here's a whole lot of how not to do it. Before I show you how to do it. But you get the idea and, and we're thicker out here and I mean we're half inch, everything's everything's good. Alright? Just not 90, but that's tweaking. That's tweaking right there. Here we go. Close it up. This is a long one. I apologize. This is. The, I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna keep it like this. I could. I could. And I really, really kind of want to. I don't want to look like an idiot, but I want to go back and just redo this video. But I'm not going to. All right. Bend it. Upset it. We understand that part. All right. Get some. Get some meat into that corner, okay? But when it comes time to, to trying to get that square edge, you're gonna come in right here on the anvil. After you've upset, until you form that, that nice edge right there. And then turn right around and draw it out. So, uh, hopefully, you learned some tricks like I did today. Works a rectangular stock. All right. I don't know if I'm blocking the sun, if it helps or not. And there we go, 90 degree angles. Okay. Or forged corners is what they what they're really called. Um, geez, I don't know. I'm a little iffy on this video because I had some mess because I've been goofing around um, because I didn't do it right. Right, even out of the exercise. And I think I think that's part of the point of this whole uh, series. So uh, we'll we'll keep going with it. Um, 
the trick is again this you see out of order it's on page 60 one all right which is he doesn't even talk about upsetting till 62 yeah you upset then you forge that stupid corner with those blows all right not over the edge of the anvil i apologize i was reading it and i'm reading it in sequential order so, all right so we we succeeded right we did not take this the straightest path um and and i read the book forward instead of backwards and that that didn't help um, I'm not sure why I've, I've never encountered this in the, some of the stuff that I've done before, but he said it's bigger stuff. I'm hammering harder, which took care of the upsetting, perhaps. I'm not exactly sure. But uh, definitely what we learned is isolate that heat. Get it isolated, heavy hammer, move that steel fast. And then when you get ready to put this, this edge in for that 90, you don't go over the anvil, you go on the anvil, and you strike it here and here. Those are the two key things. So I hope you learned as much as I did today. I'm very pleased to know these two um, you know to at least say they, don't forget these two pieces and uh, square you know square corners are just cool and, and decorative in a lot of different ways functional in a lot of ways if you're trying to make a shelf bracket or something like that you know what i'm saying all right catch you on the next one uh enjoy lord bacon chapter four um upsetting bend, uh, drawing and bending and we just finished or tried forge corners take care guys If you found this video uh, helpful, educational, maybe even if you just found it entertaining uh, and you want to support me, you can jump back to my channel. There's a button on the right hand side of the screen called support and it's kind of like a tip jar. You can go ahead and leave channel a tip for this video and that'll help me make some more. I guarantee. Thanks for your support as always.